Hello. I will be reading from the opening of my novel, Girlfriend on Mars. Amber Kivenin, drug dealer, lapsed evangelical Christian, my girlfriend of 14 years, is going to Mars. This is real. This is what I've been told. Flashback, interior, day, three months ago. Amber sat beside me on the Voyager. Hey, Kev. She tucked a blonde curl behind her ear. Are you busy? Me, clearly not busy, wondering if I looked as stoned as I felt, said, what's up? That curl bounced into her face again. She tucked it again. I have to tell you something. I expected the something to be that she wanted to adopt a cat or that she wished I would get a real job or that she'd made out with a guitarist or a guy who writes graphic novels. I did not expect her to say that she would soon be on television and a survivor meets Star Trek Amalgam where she would compete for one of two seats on the Mars Now mission. I did not expect her to say that within the year she would hopefully strap herself into a rocket and blast into deep space where she would float for nine months like a fetus in a womb before landing on the iron rich red dirt of Mars. That she would then use the frozen water in the planet's crust to grow her own food and produce her own oxygen. And she would stay on Mars forever because the technology to come home doesn't exist yet. And even if it did, even if the technology existed, even if she wanted to come back, she couldn't. Her muscle and bone density would have decreased so drastically that Earth's gravity would crush her to powder. She confessed all this while sitting next to me on our green Ikea couch in our basement suite off Commercial Drive. She used the same voice she, as she had when she told me last year about hooking up with a guy we sometimes sell to, a computer programmer slash skateboarder named Brayden. She accidentally went down on him on that green couch, one of our first purchases together. The couch we named the Voyager because we've taken our best trips on it. So she spoke quietly and looked at the constellation of confusion that was my face. This is probably a bit weird for you. I wondered if I was more stoned than I thought. I waited for her to laugh, but she hadn't been joking about Brayden and she wasn't joking about this. I mean, she chattered, it's not dangerous or anything. Mostly the ship will be remote controlled by people in New Mexico. It's sort of like a drone. Aren't drones notoriously inaccurate, I said. And what about arrow breaking? What about solar radiation? How did I even know those words? From hours of sitting on this very couch in a nostalgic stupor watching Star Trek The Next Generation. Will you do something for me? Amber took my head in her hands. Will you be a little bit happy for me for like one second? Because I made it to the third round and that's kind of a big deal. Since when were you in the first round? And do they know you're a drug dealer? We're not drug dealers. We specialize in hydroponics, which by the way, will be the technology used to grow food on Mars. By the way, I said, we sell drugs. I remembered when we were kids and she went to summer camp, then mailed me letters addressed to Kevin Watkins, 105 Amelia Street West, Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada, North America, the Earth, the Milky Way, the universe. Remember when your parents sent you to that weird Bible camp? I said, Kevin, she shut her eyes, opened them. Are you even listening? Is this like that time you hooked up with Brayden? I said, just to see what I'd do. When she shook her head, her hair bounced like it was already on Mars, like her hair already existed in low gravity. No, she said, this is real.